Hi everybody, and in this video, I thought we would talk a little bit about that controversial Danish cartoon that they have out there on a children's television network, as well as what do I think about other Danish children's television shows. Stay tuned. Come along as my Danish husband and our two kids show this American what it means to live a life in Denmark. My new Danish life. Hi there and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kelly and I'm an American who lives in Denmark. And I'm also a mother of two boys. My boys are now 11 and 8, but when we moved to Denmark they were 6 and 3. And at that point in time, they watched a lot of Danish children's television. And in fact, actually, I'm married to a Danish guy. So I know a lot about Danish cartoons or Danish children's shows from way back because of him. But this one I'm gonna be focusing more on the shows that my children have watched since coming to Denmark or on our trips to Denmark or more recently, a very controversial a Danish show on children's television. But before we get into that, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you along as a subscriber. And if you are a subscriber, thank you so much for following. I appreciate you. And if you also want to know a little bit more to get some things that you don't find here on my YouTube channel, head over to my blog, mynewdanishlife.com, and you can get more information on the things that we do, you know, behind the scenes stories of my life here in Denmark, the not so good stories, everything's over there as well. I know that when we first came to Denmark, my kids were very little. You know, the very first time they were like two and three or four, you know, we've been here many times before we actually moved. So we would be here for maybe a month in the summertime, we'd be here for a couple weeks during Christmas, and they would get exposure to the Danish children's channel called Ramashang. And Ramashang is nothing but kids shows. And it's actually a channel that's more for younger children. But they also have a children's television channel that is for like tweens and up. So kids who are like 10, 12, 14, you know, and so on, I guess you could say. But they have a channel for that. That's something else. But Ramashang, my kids, I thought, well, this is great for them to learn the language. And... I didn't really anticipate them learning the language during our visits to Famo and Fafa, right? But it was something that I thought could really help them when we moved to Denmark. So again, we moved to Denmark, they were both in the daycare, and we thought, okay, well, it would be great if they could learn the language before moving on to school. My oldest was only going to be in daycare for a few months before the summer holiday, and then he would be starting school. and. I didn't speak Danish. I mean, I wasn't able to teach him and my husband was working. So he wasn't really going to be getting a lot of Danish instruction. Yeah, he started going to daycare and they started speaking Danish to him. But we also thought it could be nice and even for me to help me learn Danish as well is watching some shows. But not only that, if you're watching a Danish children's program, you get an idea of how children behave, what is normal for children. You know, not just how they speak in, in the Danish language, but the idea of maybe how they interact with each other and, you know, what is normal to see for a child on television how they interact with adults, a lot of different things. So I wouldn't say that we had kind of like a, a, a way of approaching Ramachang, but Ramachang has a lot of different things on there. They have Danish cartoons. They have Danish children's shows with like real people. They have um, shows that come from other countries. And I want to say American because some of them are American, some of them maybe are Australian or British or Canadian. I don't exactly know where some of them come from, but they're ones that we would know about in the U.S., like Paw Patrol, or Curious George, or Fireman Sam, or Peppa Pig. You know, a lot of these that were pretty popular with my kids when they were like three and four years old. They were popular with them in the U.S., so when we moved to Denmark, it was kind of an easier transition for them because they already knew the story, they knew the characters, and then now they're trying to learn them in Danish. And so I thought that that was a really good way for them to kind of transition into Danish. I really like Ramachang, and there's so many interesting things about it that I have not seen in other places. 
There is this character, absolutely love him, probably my most favorite, and that is Hair Skag. Hair Skag is a guy with a very long beard, and that's what his name is, Mr. Beard. So every show will be of a different letter. So they'll be looking for A and doing different things with A. So one episode is all about letter A. To me, it's like the, the closest thing that we can find to like Sesame Street. I just really loved Sesame Street, still do. And Hair Skag in in a way is kind of like that. He's comical, you know, he he goes and he, he interacts with children. You know, it's something that's really good for little kids because maybe there's gonna be letters, you know, all throughout and, you, and he's like trying to look for them and you can almost envision the kids saying, it's over there, it's over there, you know, it's just really cute. I really love that guy, love that show. Another one that I really like and I'm gonna try to say this, it's Rosa Fra Rulela Gala. <laughs> I hope I said that right. This is like a baking show. And it's so cute because Rosa is the baker, right? And every episode she works with a little kid who wants to bake a cake for someone in their family. And it's almost always a grandma or grandpa. It is so adorable. So the kid will go to her her house and they will you know talk about baking this cake let's say for grandpa and then what they do is they go to grandpa's house and they sneak in and they kind of look around and try to get inspiration for what they want to do with the cake and it's always really creative you know like somebody was a golfer so they made it look like golfing you know grass with the golf balls and all this sort of stuff and then the end you know the kid takes the cake to grandpa for example and then rosa stays off to the side because they don't want her anybody to know that she was involved you know this was all the kid's idea and then the kid goes and says you know i made this cake for you and it's it's so adorable. I absolutely love it. Even though it was in Danish and I had no idea what anybody was saying, I love that show. I just thought it was adorable. Another one that I think is really kind of funny is Moda Mila. And she is somebody who's all about like uh, mechanics, you know? So she's got like a motorcycle or like a truck or a van or what, I don't know. But it's always the same kind of story where there are these bad guys and they're doing something and these kids are like, hey, this isn't fair. And she comes in to kind of like help them trick the bad guys. And you can totally tell that they're all actors, right? I mean, I don't know about the kids. They could be kids that are just like there. I don't know. But you could tell that the adults are actors because it's so kind of far-fetched what they do. I don't know. And... But it's really interesting because she comes in and helps the kids trick the adult. You know, and I don't know many shows that are like that. Maybe more like cartoons and things like that, but not with actual people. And I think that's really kind of, uh, shows you a little bit of, you know, like the Danish mentality of children and adults are more kind of equals and everybody should treat each other the same. And I don't know, I just, I just think it's funny also because, you know, I think a lot of Danish culture is being silly. You know, adults are uh, are able to be silly and you see that a lot of times. You know, if you, I think about like Sesame Street in the US, it always seems like the adults are always kind of like role models, you know? But in this case, the adults a lot of times will dress up and and do silly things, you know? And I really kind of like that. Another one that I really love and it's the same kind of idea where it's, you know, um a regular person with regular kids it's called like the Ramachang mystery which is like the Rama, like the Ramachang mystery and there's this guy his name's Christian and he's in a lot of different things he's the detective right so the kids go in there's some sort of mystery and the kids are going to work with him the detective to solve it and it's really kind of cute because you know it's like Sherlock Holmes in a way and they've got like their little pipes but they're made out of black licorice. And that's like a really Danish thing is the black licorice pipe. And it's just really cute. And it's so funny because this Christian guy, he tends to dress up as all of the witnesses. I don't know if the kids catch on or whatever. They just humor him. I have no idea. But, you know, he'll be like some sort of lady with a wig and makeup on and like, you know, the, the fake boobs and whatever else. And then he'll be some other guy who's got like these weird teeth. And I just think it's really cute because, like I said, in a way, I think it's more so a way 
not just to show children, you know, like how life is, but I think in a way it's great as an adult moving to another country to get a sense of how adults interact with children and the fact that being silly and plain is very common. Another one that I absolutely love, and this is crazy. When we first came to Denmark, I mean, I know that my kids had jet lag, like serious jet lag. Ramachang has this show called The Go Night Show, which means The Good Night Show. So at eight o'clock, someone comes on and, and they like all these, you'll see all these kids kind of meeting and then they read a story. And it's like 15 minutes, this whole like little episode. And then they kind of say good night and all of your favorite Ramachan characters go into their rooms and get into their beds. And they go to sleep until like five o'clock the next morning. So it's just like, okay. But if your kid has jet lag, you know, and you're in Denmark and you turn on Ramachang, you're just like, okay, it's 12 o'clock, I'm exhausted. Maybe they can watch a little bit of Ramachang or something. Nope. You turn on that show and all you do is see these characters sleeping. They're snoring, they're turning in their, their beds, they're scratching their butts. I mean, I don't know, but it's all the different characters. So it's one and then they'll just show a little bit of it and then all of a sudden it'll switch to somebody else, you know, and then it'll switch to somebody else. And they're all in their own respective houses and with their pajamas on. And it is seriously the cutest thing possible. And I know for me, you know, like what we wanted the kids to go to bed at a decent time when we were visiting Famo and Fafa, we would just say, nope, see, look, Bams is sleeping. That means you need to go to sleep too. And it's not a cartoon. These are like the real people or the people dressed in like a costume or something. And it's just, it's really cute. But so. Denmark also has their own cartoons and it's something that... I had never heard of these characters before coming to Denmark, but some of them are very well known. One of them is actually called Rasmus Klump, and Rasmus Klump is a bear, and he has a fishing boat and a panake house, and if you've seen my video on Langa Land, I'll put a link in up here and a link below because actually there's a link to the blog post as well if you want to see pictures. but. We went to Langeland, which is an island here in Denmark, and they have the Rasmus Klump boat and like a little pancake house that you, the kids can actually go in and play and all that kind of stuff. You also can find his house at Tivoli, which I'm gonna put another link. There's a video of Tivoli. It's an amusement park here in, in Denmark, in Copenhagen. And they actually perform like little shows and things like that at the amusement park. So that's another kind of cute thing. So he's actually really well known for those two reasons especially. Um, but he's this lovable bear. I mean, I know that there are books written about Rasmus Klump for many, many years. I mean, from when my husband was a child as well, but they've made like this new cartoon. And so you can find that on Ramachang. Another one is Circalina. Um, it's just like this little girl. I don't really know much about that show. And maybe it's because I have boys and they kind of choose what they want to watch. And that one just, we never watched that one. But I think that one's also been around for quite a few years as well. And another one that my husband was really surprised that I didn't know was um, Hugo and Rita. And Hugo, I had looked it up. I'm like, what kind of creature is Hugo? He kind of looks like a bear. He kind of looks like a lion cub. I don't know. And it says online that he's not identified. He's a jungle animal. So they don't actually say what kind of animal he is. But um, so he kind of looks like a bear. And then there's Rita, which is this fox, and she's from Copenhagen. And so they have like these shows for Hugo and Rita, and then there's also like movies. And my husband said, oh, you don't know who they are? I thought they were everywhere. And I had looked it up and it actually said that the movie did come to the US, but it went like straight to DVDs or whatever was popular at that time. Um, so I had never heard of it. And I think it's because I was kind of older anyways. So I, I wasn't watching cartoon movies at that time. But one thing that's really cool about Hugo and Rita is that if you go to Yes But Who's, um, I'll put a link in the description, um, I, we went there for camping. They have so much to do there. It's an amazing place to go, especially in the summertime, which we still need to do. We were there in the spring for a pirate dinner. It was it was amazing. But they, um, they're they like the mascots of this Yes Pahoos. So it's like a flower park with like rides and like this pirate show. And they have this indoor like zoo 
I don't know. It's just really, really cool. You know, and you're like, I, I don't know. You'll just have to check out my blog post because it is, it is amazing. You know, it makes you try to feel like you're in the jungle. It's just really cool. When we went there for camping, you go up there for camping, you can stay in like a little cabin and they have Hugo and Rita kind of walking around and my kids are like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, Ooh, who are these people? You know, my husband's like, what? Like, I don't know. Now let's get to the controversial ones. And if you read my article that I wrote in the Berlinsk, which is little newspaper we have here in Denmark, I happened to say that I didn't quite like one. And you know what? We're all right to our own opinion, right? Danes don't get all up on your high horse and say, oh my gosh, you're so mean. If I say that I don't like the Uncle Raya show, I'm sure, you know, one day I will understand Danish humor enough to be like, oh yeah, I do get it and I do think it's funny. I just don't. I just, I just don't. You know what I mean? He's a pirate and he is the guy who does all the inappropriate things and it's a real show with like real adults and then kids come in and I mean, I remember watching an episode with my kids and I thought, what is this? Because they had a part where they were like sitting and and taking a break and talking to the camera and he was sitting there drinking a beer. <laughs> and I'm thinking, sometimes we watch television to kind of like escape, you know, let's, let's go look for letters with Harris Gag or let's, I don't know, do some, let's go bake a cake with Rosa, right? And I realize I might sound kind of uptight, but you know what? I don't need to apologize for, to anybody for not liking that show. But I'm really kind of glad they don't like the one where the pirate says all kinds of foul mouth things and sip, start, sits there and drinks beer. I'm so glad that they don't find it entertaining. <laughs> but you know what? Um, I'm sure it's quite a harmless show. I just don't really find the humor. So there. There you go. And my last one that I, I feel is a bit uh, controversial is the one you're waiting to hear about, I'm sure. This is John Dillerman. This is a story about a man who has a very large penis that happens to get him into trouble all the time. Now, something to keep in mind about John Dillerman. These are only five minute shows, okay? So this is not like, oh my gosh, my child sat there for 45 minutes and just watched this gigantic penis going all over and stealing things off a of barbecue and, you know, knocking stuff off a shelf or, or whatever. And this guy's just like, whoa, I don't know what to do. My, oh, oh no, you know, and he's constantly getting in trouble because of his extra large penis. I can't make this stuff up. I mean, who thought of this? What? And you're probably wondering, what do I think about John Dillerman? I think it's actually really kind of funny that's his name, by the way. Well, as you know, I am the mother of two boys. So having people be obsessed with a penis is not anything new to me. I'm actually really tired of it, to be quite honest. And if you are a mother of a boy, you know what I'm talking about. It's just like constantly, <laughs> Can we just not? Can can we just not? I know that when the show came out, there was like, you know, I think it was during lockdown. I don't know. So my kids really weren't around their friends. They didn't hear about the show. They had no idea it even existed. And I had some time to think about it, you know, and I watched it. And I'm thinking, mm. and so I introduced it to my kids. <laughs> I figured this is going to be so interesting to them. And I said, have you guys seen this show about the guy with a really, really big penis? And they're like, what? You know, and it's kind of probably a weird thing coming from your mom. Like, mom, what are you talking about? <laughs> I go, let's go to Ramachang and I'm going to show you. And they laughed and they thought it was so funny. I mean, I don't know how I would feel if I had like a four-year-old daughter kind of thing. Because chances are... She doesn't know what a boy's penis is, you know? And that's like, I'm not having a conversation with a four-year-old. But being a mom of boys, eh, I didn't really feel that it it was anything really weird, you know? It's not like, 
I don't know. It's not like my kids are reading into sh these shows and thinking all metaphorically or, or whatever, you know. It, it is just a weird thing that it was something that somebody thought up. Like, oh, this is going to be a great idea. And then the TV channel says, oh, yeah, that sounds great to us, too. It's like it's not only just one person who made it, but there's a lot of people involved. A lot of people who thought it was a good idea. And you're just like, why? But I think it's pretty harmless, you know, and uh, do I think it's high quality television? No. I'm all into, like I said, Hair Skag, Rosa Fra Rulella Gala, and you know, I'm more into that kind of stuff than whatever. But I feel like it's harmless and my kids watched it, then they moved on with their lives, you know what I mean? So, eh. Another thing that I just want to throw in there about Danish children's television is that they have very short shows. Just as I had mentioned with John Dillerman, that's only five minutes, right? They have some other shows that are literally two minutes long. And it's crazy. You know, it gives me the idea that it's like, like a YouTube short or like a Instagram reel or TikTok. You know what I mean? Everything is getting shorter and shorter. Because I realize that people's attention spans aren't that long. I mean, how many of you actually watch my videos all the way to the end? But you know, it's crazy that they have those. There's this one that is newer, and it's where Christian, the guy from the mystery show, he talks about dinosaurs. Because you know there are so many kids out there who are interested in dinosaurs. And this show is only two minutes long. And he has like all these holograms of different dinosaurs, and every episode is a different dinosaur. And he talks about that dinosaur for two minutes. And that's it. That's the show. Now I know that I have probably left out some. So if there's any shows that are on Ramachang in 2021. Or really any time in the late teens of the 2000s, early 2020s. Let me know. Let me know your favorite show if it is on Ramachang or if it is a different channel. I would really love to know that about children's shows with you. So give me some more information on you in the comments. I would really love to know about that. Thanks for following along on this video. Thanks for checking out my blog for those of you who have come over there and said hi. I really appreciate that. And I hope you are checking out more of my videos. There's so much in my playlist. And if there's something that you'd like to see that's not there, let me know about it in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. I hope you come back again. And as always, take care.